Lisa Calc is a web-based application for individual component design which provides engineers with an easy-to-use interface that allows for full control over inputs such as geometry and loading in addition to graphical and numerical results including robust and detailed report. In this video, we'll take a look at the steel joist design functionality. Before adding our properties, or our design information or loading, I'm going to go ahead and click on the settings option here and open up the code information. We can see the two steel joist codes that are available to us, the SJI 42nd edition and the SJI 43rd edition. Next we can see we have shape options here, one that we can either explicitly define our joist shape, the second is we can choose to optimize our shape. The optimization will pick the least weight joist based on the length defined and also the load applied. Now we can also choose to enable this filter by length. The filter by length option reduces the list of available members such that only the joist whose max band length referenced in the SJI load tables exceed the specified member length. So I go ahead and I set our member length here to 20 feet we can see that our shape list has changed to only show us shapes that could possibly work based on the max span length. I'm going to go ahead and start by choosing a 16K5. Now we could also choose different joist series, so K series, LH series, and so forth. But in this case, we're just going to focus on the K series. Next, if I go ahead and click the Design tab, I can see I can select the deflection ratios for Dead Live and Dead Plus Live as well. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and add loads. And here I can add point and distributed loads. So I'm going to start this particular case by adding some distributed loads. So let's first add a distributed load for the dead load. So I'm going to add a magnitude of 250 pounds per linear foot. And we'll make it a category dead. And then we'll apply this for the full length of the beam. Next, I can go ahead and add a second distributed load. In this case, let's go ahead and add 275 pounds per linear foot. And again, we'll apply this over the entire length. While we're adding loads, we can see that the load combinations are automatically being created for us. One other thing to note here is that the self weight is automatically included in the definition of the joist, so you don't have to add that in addition with your dead load. Now we're ready to go ahead and solve this member. Selecting solve will get ourselves our code check as well as our design results. And so in this case, we see our code check at 97% utilized. Now we can go ahead and turn on our shear and moment diagrams as well as our reactions to view these graphically. Now, if I look at the detail report, we can look at the different information that's presented and step-by-step -step how the steel joist is designed. Here we can see the basic information of the joist. If we scroll down a little bit, we can go ahead and look at the calculations tab, which shows us the load capacity check required based on our applied load. Now moving on, I'm going to go ahead and open up this joist already created which is basically the same type of joist, except in this case, we've chosen to optimize that joist instead of setting an explicit shape. So we define the K series and we'll define the length. Now if we go ahead and look at the properties here, you can see that a shape has been chosen for us. And we can also see the calculations here that it's done the calculation based on their required and available capacities. Now, typical joists are designed when you have a uniform loading, but what happens when we don't have uniform loading? So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and add a new joist, and we'll go ahead and choose it as explicit joist. We'll set the length here again to 20 feet, and I'm going to choose the shape in this case to be a 18K5. Now we'll leave the design criteria the same, but let's go to the loads in this case. I'm going to start by adding a point load, so let's add a 750 pound point load and live load 
at the seven and a half foot location. Next, let's go ahead and add a distributed load. But instead of a uniformly distributed load, let's go ahead and add a taper distributed load. So again, our load combinations are getting created for us. And if we go ahead and solve for this member, we can first see the code check. So we're again getting a passing code check. We can see all of our diagrams. So our deflection plot, our shear diagram, our moment. Then if we go ahead and look at our detail report, the first thing we'll see here in the properties for the input data is the shape is defined with this SP. So as a result of the addition of this tapered uniform load, as well as the point load, we're designing a special joist. Because the loads are not uniform, RISA-Calc is actually going to calculate an equivalent distributed load for us. If I click on the loads tab, we can see here we have equivalent distributed loads for dead load and live load. So based on the dead load, we have a start and end magnitude. And then based on the applied live load for the point load, we have a start and end magnitude. This summation of equivalent distributed loads is what's going to be used in the calculation here. Now if we wanted to go ahead and print this report, we can go ahead and click the download button. The report will generate and then we can go ahead and open that PDF in whatever PDF viewer that you're using. For more information about RISA Calc, including available components and pricing, please visit RISA.com.